Jesus. God, we thank you for this time you've allowed us to gather together. Oh God, even though we're not together in person, we thank you for this togetherness you've allowed us to experience virtually. And so God, we pray now as we come on this morning to celebrate the birth of your son. Oh God, that your spirit will meet us wherever we might be. Pray God for your anointing to fall fresh upon us. Oh God, that when we finish with this service, we shall say truly, we've been in the presence of the Lord. And so we thank you now, God, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise uh, for this Christmas morning is a very familiar Christmas carol, Silent Night, Holy Night. The words will be on the screen. We ask that you would join in singing with us all four verses, Silent Night.
join me as we affirm our faith, the use of the Apostles' Creed. For the Spirit of the Lord is one true church, apostolic, universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Scripture for this morning is taken from prophetic book of Isaiah, ninth chapter, begin reading at verse number one. Isaiah, ninth chapter, beginning at first verse. I will be reading the New Revised Standard Version. You'll find the New International Version on your screen. But there will be no more gloom for those who were in anguish. The former times brought into contempt the land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nation. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, the bars across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I've read for you Isaiah chapter 9, 1 through 7, word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we pause this morning to thank you. God, we thank you for this day that you have allowed us to see. God, a day in which we come to celebrate the birth of your son. The birth, of oh God, of your son who had been promised through the generations, who has come, oh God, to dwell amongst his people. And Father, we thank you on this particular morning because, God, we know that you didn't have to wake us up. You didn't have to allow us, oh God, to see another Christmas morning. But simply, oh God, because of your grace and your mercy, you allowed us to be here on this day. So, God, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, God, for the gift of health, reasonable portion of strength. We thank you, God, for the gift of family, as we gather on this day, God, we thank you for each one that you've given to us. And God, we pray that you would meet their needs. But Father, we know that there's someone this morning who might be hurting. Someone, oh God, who is bereaved the loss of a loved one during this season. Someone who woke up this morning, oh God, and did not find anything under the tree with their name on it. But God, in spite of all of that, we know, God, that you're a good God. We know, God, that you're able to do exceedingly above all that we may ask or think. 
And so, Father, now we pray that there be any needs to be met for your people. Oh God, that you would pour down those gifts upon them. Allow them, O oh God, to know that it is not what's under the tree that matters, but the one, O oh God, who was in the manger, the one who would ultimately hang on the tree for our salvation. We pray, God, for each person who's joined us on this morning. God, whatever needs and concerns they might have, pray, God, that you would meet those needs for us. For you said in your word, God, that if we would cast all of our cares upon you, because you do indeed care for us. You also said, oh God, if we would ask anything in your name, that it will be done for us. And so, God, we're asking now that you would search the hearts of your people. Search the hearts, oh God, of your creation. And whatever it is, oh God, that they stand in need of, pray that you meet that need for them this morning. God, give them the gift that only you can give, the gift of joy, the gift of life, the gift of health, and the gift of strength. And so, Father, we thank you now for what you're going to do on this day. Pray, God, that you would bless us as only you can. We thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Let's pray. God, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, will be pleasing in thy sight. O Lord, draw my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I'm sure by now that most of you have opened up your presents or looked under the tree to see if there was anything for you. Is there something with my name on it? Quite possibly, could be a whole lot. Find just a couple of things, or perhaps maybe one of the unfortunate ones who didn't get anything this year for Christmas. But whether there was a present with your name on it under a tree, or delivered to your home. There's a gift for all of us. Isaiah talks about this gift that comes for all of us. It says in the ninth chapter in sixth verse, for a child, has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For a child has been born for us, for us, for us. That's inclusive of everybody. A son has been given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So this morning, I want to talk to you from the thought, a gift for all of us. A gift for all of us. Now, I don't know if you were like me, but this year when family members asked me what I wanted for Christmas, I really didn't have anything that I could think of that I wanted. It seemed like I would had everything that I could possibly ask for. And the last thing I wanted was anything else that would cause more clutter in the house than I already had. I didn't need any more shoes. 
I didn't need any more clothing. God knows I didn't need any more electronic devices. I was just satisfied with the things that I had. And that satisfaction came because I recognized that the gift that I really wanted, I had already received. That was the gift God had given to us well over 2,000 years ago. And Isaiah prophesied about this gift, prophesied about there will be one who was coming and that you would find this baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, that a virgin would give birth to this infant, and that they would name him Emmanuel, which means that God is with us. And when you think about the totality of that gift and just how great it is that God gave us this gift of his son, you recognize that regardless of what you may have under the tree this morning, really does not equate to the gift that God has already given to us. What I've discovered about gifts, though, is that oftentimes the gifts that you don't expect turn out to be the gifts that you cherish the most. The ones that you didn't expect, stuff you didn't ask for, turns out to be the very thing that you needed. And we didn't ask God to send his son. We weren't expecting God to come down and to dwell among us humans and mortals. But in spite of that, God still sent Jesus. And because he sent him, we recognize that that was a greater gift than any money could ever give us. That's a gift that Amazon couldn't wrap up and bring to us. That's a gift that UPS could not drop off for us. That's a gift that you couldn't put on layaway. That's a gift that you could not afford. This was a gift for all of us. Didn't matter where you came from. Didn't matter what you were going through. Didn't matter who you were. In spite of everything that you are and potentially could be, God gave us this gift. And I don't know about you, but I'm happy that God had a gift for all of us. Isaiah speaks to a people who find themselves in a bad place, find themselves in bondage. They find themselves in a place where they didn't think they could ever be. And while he gave them instructions on what God would do as a result of their actions, letting them know that God had gotten frustrated with them, because of his frustration, God was going to allow some things to happen. But even when God gets frustrated with us, when God finds it necessary to chastise us, he doesn't do it out of a place of anger, but he still does it out of a place of love. And Isaiah allowed the people to know that even though you might be going through right now, even though you might be uh, facing a situation you never thought you'd have to face before, that while you're in the midst of this, God is promising that he's going to do something great for you because he's going to give you a son. And when he gives this son, this son would not be like any other child that you met. Yeah, he may be a cute baby, but he's going to be more than just that. This will be a child who will have authority that rests upon his shoulders. Now, this is a child that governments will bow down to. And this child shall be called Mighty God wonderful counselor, everlasting father, and the prince of peace. This gift that he gives to all of us. So I just want to highlight three things about this gift that he gives us. First thing is, is that he gives us the gift of a marvelous confidant. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. And so what that lets me know is that regardless of what you might be facing in your life, God gives us a gift of someone that we can have a relationship with. You know, you can't confide everything to everybody. There's some folks that you can tell stuff to and they'll stay right there with them. And there are other folks that you say something to them before you even get your mouth closed. It's on Facebook, it's on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. They're sending out emails and text messages about the stuff that you're going through. 
But the good thing that God gives us with this gift is that he gives us a marvelous confidant, one who, no matter where we might find ourselves in life, no matter what we may be going through, we can talk to him and he can talk back to us. I don't know about you, but I'm excited this morning that he gives us this marvelous confidant, one who sticks closer than any brother, one who will not forsake you or leave you, one who, in spite of what you might be going through, can still give you some hope, still provide you with some peace, still provide you with some comfort. He gives us a marvelous confidant. He had to let the Israelites know that even though you're going through right now in this captivity in Babylon, that he gives you a mighty counselor. He gives you somebody who can see beyond the stuff that you're going through and still provide you with some hope. Are you all still with me so far? Not only does he provide you with a marvelous confidant, but the gift he also gives you is the gift of a mighty creator. Wonderful counselor, the mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, whose strength is greater than any problem you might face. I don't know what you woke up with this morning. What problems you might have faced on this Christmas morning. What tears may have been welling up in your eyes because of things that have happened. But God gives us a mighty creator who can take the rough parts of our life and make it smooth. Who can take the worst parts of our life and find some good out of it. Who can let us know that even though we might be struggling on this day, because this child has now come, it gives us an opportunity to have something great made out of our lives. If you got a relationship with Jesus Christ, I just want you to think back as to how God has changed your life once you came in contact with this mighty creator. I, I know that you may still be struggling, but the struggle you realize is not going to last always because you've got Jesus on your side. I, I know you may have woken up with pain this morning, but, but the pain is not gonna be there always because you've got a creator that can create something stronger and something better than you could ever imagine. I know that you may have woke up this morning feeling hopeless, but you can still have hope because you recognize that God can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you may ask or think, and if you can just get a hold of this gift. Oh, I wish you could hear me this morning. This gift that God has given us, this mighty creator who can supersede all the stuff that we go through. Doesn't matter what the weather is like outside. God is above all of that. Doesn't matter what folks are saying about you. God is above all of that. Doesn't matter what you don't have under your tree or don't have on your table this morning. God is above all of that. And because he sent his son, you've got access to this mighty creator. A gift for all of us. Marvelous, confident, mighty creator. Then also, finally, gives you the gift of one who can help you maintain your composure. I know somebody got up this morning and wanted to lose their mind because they did not get the gift that they wanted. I know there was some child who woke up this morning upset because they didn't get the PlayStation 5 that they wanted to get. I know that there was some grown man who got up this morning, was upset that he get, didn't get those shoes that he wanted. There was some woman that got up this morning wasn't, and was upset they didn't get that jewelry that they wanted. And so now you've got to try to find some way to keep your composure to not show this anger that you have because you didn't get what you wanted. But the last name that Isaiah gives for Jesus in this prophecy is the Prince of Peace. When you have access to the Prince of Peace, you recognize that regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of how difficult life may seem to you, regardless of how hard it may seem to put one foot in front of the other, 
Because you have access to this Prince of Peace, it allows you to still keep your composure. When you want to give up, when you want to throw in the towel, you can't do it because there's something within you that holds the reins, something within you that you can't explain. You don't know what it is. All you know that it's something. When you want to give up and turn your back against the world, but yet you can still walk around with a smile on your face, that's not because of anything that you've done or anything that you've got this morning, but it's because of the gift that God has given to us the gift of the Prince of Peace. And when you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. And what that means is that even when you don't feel like you ought to have a smile on your face, you can still have a smile because you recognize that the peace that you have didn't come from what's going on around you, but the peace comes from what's inside of you. The peace is not based upon what the world has done to you, but the peace is based upon the one who holds the world in his hand. The peace is not based upon the stuff that you got, but the peace is based upon the possibilities that you can reach. And when you recognize this gift that God has given to you, you recognize that I've got a gift that goes to everybody. Every man, woman, and child has access to this gift. Aren't you glad this morning that God had something for you under the tree? Aren't you glad this morning that God brought his son to make a ransom for you? Aren't you glad this morning that you've got access to the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the everlasting father? And I want you to know, dear my brothers and sisters, if you don't open up anything this morning, if you don't have anything with your name on or under the tree, God's got a gift from you. And that gift is named Jesus. And he said in his word, that a virgin will give this child and his name shall be Emmanuel, which means that God is with us. And this is a gift you can take anywhere that you go. I'm so glad this morning that God has given us this gift. A gift for all of us. This is a gift you don't have to worry about not being in stock. This is a gift that you don't have to worry about being on back order. It's a gift that you don't have to wonder if it's going to arrive on time. God has already given us this gift. And he doesn't just give it on December 25th. But any opportunity that you want to come to the Lord, he gives you access to the marvelous confidant. Access to the mighty creator, and access to the one who helps to maintain your composure. This Christmas morning, I want you to just remember that regardless how it was when you got up this morning, or what the rest of the day might present for you, God has made a gift for all of us. So if you have yet to make a relationship with Jesus, I want to invite you to do that. You don't have to be in church and come to the altar to, to do it, but you can do it right where you are. Just ask the Lord to come into your heart, save you. God's able to do it. If you are saved and you wish to unite with us here, send information to us. We'll be glad to have you. The info at St. Julia AME Zion Church, or amezion.org. Info at St. Julia AME Zion.org. If you want or need special prayer, that God would continue to reveal that gift to you. God's able to do it. So I want to do just a short prayer with you before we depart for this morning. God, we thank you for this gift that you've given to us gift of your son that you've blessed us with, the mighty creator, the marvelous confidant, the one who maintains our composure. And so God, we pray that as we go through this holiday, 
in this holiday season. That you make us cognizant of this gift. Remind us, oh God, that it's not about what's under the tree, but it's about who was in the manger. And so God, we thank you now for how you're touching the lives of your people. Thank you, God, how you're showing up in their lives in a real way. We thank you now, even God, for those who ask for salvation and how you've, you've saved them. Allow them to know, oh God, that this is not a gift that expires. It's not a gift that you can now grow or a gift that goes old, but a gift, oh God, that renews itself every single day for us. So God, be with us. Keep us as only you can. But we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we depart, I want to just remind you all about the opportunities to give. We do have the opportunity to give via Givelify. We just search for St. Julia Amy Zion Church, Jacksonville, North Carolina. You can access our website. There is uh, links there to give. You can also uh, send your gifts through the mail. They will have the address up on the screen shortly. We thank you in advance for your gifts and how you've helped to sustain this ministry as we continue to share the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. Pray that you all have a blessed Christmas, that you enjoy time with your family, that you enjoy time with friends, and that you remember the gift that God has given to all of us as we look unto the Lord now for the benediction. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above all that we may ask or think. To him be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said together, Amen.